Hello my lovelies and welcome back to a Cookie Corner of YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how I put together my um, my little stitchy squares for the swaps. Um, this is one I did for a birthday for a friend of mine and um, I thought I'd just take you through the process. I know some of you may be interested and um, if you want to know exactly how I put them together then this is the place to be. Um, it's a similar process that I use for all of the stitching uh, projects that I have done so far but obviously it's um, a little square and these beautiful little squares can also, in you could incorporate them into a piece but you could also then just frame them you know put them in a little frame which is what this one is going to be in um when i eventually get around to putting it together uh but i thought you might like to see the process of how i am putting these together and basically what i do is very simple and i'll just go through it with you so the first thing you're going to need is a square of felt she said digging through her piles of things um, and the square that I'm working on because of the swaps so if you're into the swaps from um, Arti Farti Annie group on Facebook and on Discord we've all been madly stitching swap squares uh, that we can send off to each other and then receive some beautiful pieces of artwork back in return so it's either an art swap or a stitch swap and this is a stitch swap one that I'm going to go through so first of all you're going to need a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter piece of felt this is my method obviously um, other people will do different ways but this is how I start so I've got a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter piece of felt I'll just pop that little up there in the corner there so you can see him the next thing you're going to need is a piece of calico that's what I've been working on and to give these a little border so the border you're looking for is like a, a centimeter give it or take a few millimeters either side so that you've got some kind of a border to work on but this is going to be your base okay um grab out all your scraps of fabric these are the ones i've been working with i took these away with me literally <laughs> these have been these have been traveling traveling around scandinavia and um this was my little kit that I took with me. I done a little video on the kit, but that was some of the scrappy fabrics I took with me. Push those to one side just for a minute and pull you over here. Just a second. Right, so you had your little scrappy square, and what I've done out here is to place my fabrics on my square this one i've already done it's like blue peter style here's one i made earlier <laughs> i've already picked out the fabrics that i want you do the same audition them on your piece see where they go these have moved around a few times until i was happy with where i wanted them to be because of the idea that i want to do um sticking with the animal theme um so now we come to the part where we pull all these pieces together and how I do this first of all you can do this one of two ways you could take a picture of where you've laid everything or you could use your little quilters glue which I am doing here sticking it down in places come on I'm just making sure that these vaguely stay in the places I want them to be I'm not going to be too precious about it I just want to get them just to stay where I need them just long enough so that I can get them down on a piece of felt and vaguely holding themselves together you can pin these you know my aversion to pins if you've been watching my channel for long enough uh, you can use clips sometimes on the piece this small though it might just be that they get in the way slightly um, still workable as are the pins pins <laughs> oh you know how I love the pins right okay so I have now got my basis of fabric down, putting all these little raw, raw bits off just as I go. 
<laughs> try not to disturb all the bits. And anybody can think of a way that I could show you to do this without using my hands, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> Little in joke there. If you can think of a way I, I don't have to use my hands then. Um, I don't know. Feet? Could I do it with my feet? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to unify all of these now with a stitch that goes along all the way around the bottom. And what I'm going to use for that is this green. So I quite like it. I've suddenly become into green in a big way. <laughs> I don't quite know how that happened, but I seem to have pulled off a whole load of this I don't need. I'm winding it up. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is about me and green, but suddenly we are best buddies. Need my scissors. Should have my embroidery scissors with me, but hey ho, for this purpose, we are sat at my desk and my embroidery scissors are over the other side of the room, and I'm too lazy to stand up and go and fetch them. <laughs> honesty, honesty, right there. Okay, threaded my needle. I've got a very long piece of thread here. I don't usually advocate very long pieces of thread, but do you know what? I'm feeling in a reckless mood today, so let's go with it. And a la all my other videos on the slow stitching, I am going to do a running stitch. That will unify all these pieces together because this is one color thread and it will kind of bring all the pieces together hold them down if you are feeling at all nervous about this tack it if you want to first i as i said i'm feeling reckless and so i'm just going straight in with the stitching i'm trying to get a ruler in there as well at the same time uh, if you want to feel even more reckless you could just add a few on and see how that goes. How do you like them apples? There we go. <laughs> uh, that's that one. And we'll go right to the end. Not being precious about the fact that these stitches aren't all the same length. Uh, maybe some of them are a little bit wonky. I personally think that adds to the charm. If you are very precise and you want to go perfectly size stitches and however you want it to be then you know be my guest you do you and um and that's all one and good but i'm quite happy to um to have a little bit of reckless randomness in my pieces <laughs> how are you anyway how are you getting on i I've been so busy for this past month. I mean, we were away two weeks and then back for two weeks and away for another two weeks. It feels like I haven't really touched the ground much. And I'm kind of now in a recovery mode. <laughs> um, in fact, um, to give myself a break, because I have, I have been doing a fair amount of stitching recently, I... Um, I did a little bit of crochet, you know, crochet is usually my early autumn go-to, so it didn't seem too out of place to be doing a little bit of crochet. So I eased myself back in with a little crochet bag, which I'll probably show you on a video. It is not my pattern. It is uh, one from the lovely Lucy from Attic24, whose many blankets I have <laughs> crocheted in the past until we're all cocooned in blankets because I just couldn't stop making them at one point. I got quite obsessed. Um, I had a running deal with my bank that was just paying into Wool Warehouse <laughs> to buy packs of wool. Um, so that was, that was a real time and I was just obsessed with making all the beautiful blankets that Lucy um, very kindly produces the patterns and stuff for. So that's what I did. And we ended up with a lot of blankets. <laughs> <laughs> 
So my little foray back into the crochet for this autumn has been something that I want to do a few of because I want to give them away as presents. Um, I'm getting into my Christmas present making fairly early. I know I mentioned that C word again, um, but if you are a crafter or a maker or an artist and you want to make things that you're going to give away for that C word period in time, then actually I'm quite late at starting to be fair because <laughs> it does take time. If someone makes you something handmade and gives it to you as a gift, you can be sure that that person really thinks a lot of you because it does take time. And I know some people, it's like, oh, it's handmade, all right, okay. Handmade means heart made. It's made with your heart. And it means that you put a lot of thought into it. You've given it your blood, sweat and tears sometimes <laughs> in order to make it um, for the person that you're making it for. And you generally have a person in mind when you're making things. I know I do. Even this little square has a person in mind for it as I am making it. They don't know it yet, but they will. <laughs> And it plops onto their letterbox, through their letterbox, not onto it. That would be a bit weird. Um, onto their mat from their letterbox or wherever. Um, and this little piece will be theirs. And I'm hoping that they're going to enjoy it as much as I enjoy sewing it together. The whole process of these squares has been glorious for me. Um, I have loved every minute of this swap that we have been doing via our Discord and um, and the Arty Farty uh, group on uh, Facebook. Both of those places you need to go and check out if you want to join in the fun, because I do believe, Annie has said that in a couple of months' time, uh, November, we'll be doing another round of swapping, which is lovely, because it will give us a little bit of a break. We've got a few things coming up as well that you might want to take part in. Um, so it is well worth going to the Discord channel. I'll leave the details, obviously, in my description box. And um, coming in and joining in and getting to know some of us. You might get to know me way more than you want to. <laughs> you know of my affin affinity with moomins and wombles and the like and obviously magpies um, and birds of a feather of all kinds especially owls <laughs> you will know of all these things if you join in the discord channel right so you can see what i'm doing i'm, I'm not going to bore you any longer with my ramble or my flirty hands <laughs> Uh, but if you would like to um, continue with this stitch all the way down to the bottom, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put my audio book on and have a listen, finish off down to the bottom of here, and then we'll have a look at what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so I have jumped on ahead a little bit, but I'm going to explain to you exactly what I've done. I have finished my unifying stitch which was the running stitch that went from top to bottom to hold all the places in place all the pieces in place even and i think you can probably see what i'm going to do <laughs> with this one so this one was a lion i have also done a tiger which will be going out shortly to someone in a swap and this one's a bear so we've got lions and tigers and bears oh my <laughs> Couldn't resist, sorry. <laughs> so we have the bear. I have vaguely cut out a bear shape here. And um, he's got a bear, little bear, bear head with the ears and his muzzle and a nose. And as on the other pieces, I've put a little bit of um, fabric contrasting just to give it a little bit more interest, so to speak. Um, what I'm going to have to do now is to embroider into and around this bear in order to attach him to my little backing piece. Now you will notice that so far I haven't put him on this piece there. That's because I want to kind of 
obfuscate the back <laughs> um, I want to kind of cover up the back stitches you don't have to on this one I didn't literally you get to see all of my stitches on the back of there um, because I put the felt on the back for some strange reason I don't quite fathom I did that but this is the usual way <laughs> I just lost my brains for a moment on that one um so yeah this is the felt piece this is the bit that's going to have all the stitching into it and when it's completed I will then you can see around there I will then um stab stitch this onto a base piece of fabric anyway I jump ahead of myself so I've cut out my vague bear shape um, those eyes that are little brads um the little brads that you use for paper fastenings and i think they make super cute eyes on all of these things uh, when i was away i didn't have any of those so i just did french not so either of those things all work really well to put eyes on your creatures if you want to put eyes on your creatures <laughs> Alternatively, you might want to do something that doesn't have a face, like a plant. But if you're living in my world, faces do go on plants. <laughs> I will have a plant with a face at some point in time, just because. Um, this is kooky world and anything can happen. Um, right, so I've also got a little bit of my bling. I usually have a little bit of bling that goes on everything, either in a form of this uh, beautiful fabric, which I got from Paper and String, and it is um, a very thick glitter on like a, um, a drill background. And it's really firmly stuck. It's not going to flake off. You will get bits when you cut it, but very few. So I've got to figure out where I want this to go on my piece. Um, I've also picked out a couple of buttons that I want to add in. And I was kind of thinking down this edge here and making them into maybe flowers or something on that side. And now what else I've got to do is to add in the extra stitching and to go around all my edges so that they're all um, nicely fixed down. You don't have to do all of this, really. Um, but I like to make sure that things are not going to kind of fall apart as soon as somebody gets one of these, which would be a shame and a tragedy, wouldn't it? Um, so, yes, the next thing I'm going to have to do is to get my bare... Um, fixed down and the reason i put this on first before i've done all the other bits is it's just going to save time it's going to save time stitching because if i was stitching into all of these bits and then adding the applique on top the applique would then cover a lot of the stitches um, if you want to do um, all the stitches first please you know be my guest but because i don't especially want to do extra work where i don't need to i told you i'm Sensibly, I'm a lazy person. <laughs> I'm not really, but if I don't, if I'm going to do something that's going to be covered up, sometimes I will do that. But most of the time, especially if you're doing a lot of these pieces, I've done quite a few of these, so um, I'm going for a little shortcut, only in the way of the fact that the stitching wouldn't be seen anyway. So the bear is now in place. I am going to figure out now where to put this and I think it's going to go up in this corner I don't think it fits there definitely not I'm trying it around in different places but it definitely seems to fit there as either a sun or a moon or whatever you want it to be now you can stitch through this just pointing that out as a fact it, it will stitch through it, you might need a finer needle and a, um, a thinner thread in order to do it you can do it with whatever, whatever you like but that's easier to do it with a finer needle but what I'm going to do this one this is gem tack and it's a rhinestone crystal sequins and more to fabrics and accessories and i have been loving this i do love my aliens felt and foam glue but for taking away with me and for precision purposes this little bottle of joy is glorious i'm thoroughly recommended and what i'm going to do is to get myself a bigger bottle of this so that i can refill this tiny bottle for traveling so that's all positioned and stuck down there I'm just going to leave it I don't want to press it down too hard I want it to stick of its own accord um, it just says on here but apply a small amount of glue to embellishment gently position without pressing allowed to dry 24 hours well it will be dry before that so you can still keep working into this but it will be properly properly done 
24 hours. So I've taken this away with me in this tin. Puts it in this little clippy bag and it's also got a little pin in there because if you anything like me, the nozzle is a bit of a worry in case it becomes clogged. And how amazing the gods of weather have produced some sunshine for me now so that my desk has suddenly become a hot house. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is to um, go around my bear and attach him onto the piece with a stab stitch and some uh, brown brown cotton which has magically appeared there. I'm just going to use two strands of this to go around. I am then going to uh, go around the inside of the ears maybe and around his muzzle and nose and add some little stitches into that top piece of fabric like I did here um, just to add a little bit of furry detail. He is a furry bear so he's going to have his face put on now and stitched down. I'll be back. I'm still listening to my Audible book, which is awesome. And I will do some of that and come back to you and show you what I'm going to do with these two buttons. Okay, so here we have our little bear friend. I have stitched him down with a whip stitch just over and over just to put him down onto our little fabric piece. I have also taken the opportunity to stitch up this little piece of um, material in this lovely variegated thread that I had and um, because it matches in with this whole piece perfectly so I dragged that out of my little stitch bag and what I'm doing now is just going around each of these pieces and I'm going to use this variegated thread for each of them because I think it fits in so nicely and um, really liking how it's looking so for each of the little pieces now I am just going to do an overstitch around all of it just to um, to fasten those down. So I've got a little bit left on here. Hopefully it's still threaded. It is. I can put a knot in there. <laughs> My little twisty knot. There we go. And what I'm going to do is just take it around this little piece here just to show you how I do it uh, bring you down a little further so you can see and just a small amount of it just going around so that it will be held down for any other stitching that I want to put into it That's very therapeutic, very easy to stitch and just any little threads like that that pop up. I'll just take them out, put them in my oats jar. So I'll find some use for those. <laughs> I've already got ideas and plans for those. If you've seen that my little uh, fabric vessel that we made um, they made a, a really nice base strengthened the base of the vessel so they were quite useful for that didn't know whether it would work at the time but it did actually work now the sun's coming out again <laughs> uh, cannot um, judge this weather at the moment it's just doing what it pleases so almost at the end, I'm just hoping my thread, you know, when you get to that end of bit of thread and you hope that it's going to let you go through to it. And it is on this occasion. So I'll just fasten that off on the back. So what we're going to do is using any thread you like, I've got this variegated one. I'm going to go around all the pieces now to fasten those down and I will be back in another tick. Okay, so now our bear is in place he's all tacked down and look at what i added <laughs> i had to add a little bit more glitz so on the top of his head on the material i used 
some of this glitterific from folk art. I've got a whole set of these now. <laughs> and this one looked perfect to go just to add a little accent because you know I'm a magpie, you know I like glitter, you know I like things that sparkle. <laughs> and so I have to add something of this into each piece I do. Uh, this might not be you. It's, it's me, it might not be you, but I added it in and I just really love it. I'm loving how it looks. And that was a little experiment on my behalf just to see how well it works on material. Obviously, you don't want to use it all over a piece because that would kind of take away the effect of having it on there. But there we go. So now we're at this point. Um, I'm kind of thinking he might need something around his neck. I know. Let me show you the tiger I made as well. This is it's the tiger. So we've got a lion and a tiger and a bear. Oh, my. Um, because the lion had his mane, um, I didn't feel he needed anything down there at all. Uh, the tiger was inspired by a tiger who came to tea, so he had a little bow tie on. So he's got a bow tie on there. Um, for my bear, I kind of wanted to give him a scarf, but I'm not sure how it's going to work out. So I'm just considering now whether just to give him a, a necktie. <laughs> or maybe another bow tie I'm not sure I'm just going to try some things out and see what works now the sun has decided beautifully to come and sit on my desk again even though it's been as dull as heck for the past 10 minutes <laughs> so do bear with me for a moment bear bear with me <laughs> oh I'm so amusing Right, uh, let me dig through my fabric and see if I've got some tiny scraps I could use. Mm. Mm, no, not feeling that one at all. Ooh, hold on. Mm. No, not feeling that one either. <laughs> Maybe I should just add in some stitching. Instead of giving him a bow tie or a necktie, I could just add some stitching in a lighter colour, like his his muzzle. That might be an idea. Uh, the other thing I want to do is to put on these buttons. So let's get those on now. These are going to be the little flowers on the piece. So I'm just going to grab myself some green thread. So I'm going to use that for the stalk of the flowers as well and hope it shows up. I do apologise about the sunshine. I hope it's not bleaching everything out. Um, but let me just stitch these on. I wanted that one about there. Which way around? That way around, I think. And I've gone in a contrasting colour to the fabric because I quite like to do that. I think if you have everything in the same shade, it can look nice. And you could go with lots and lots of different greens and things. But I kind of like, in my pieces, I like to add some contrast colours, which is why he's got um, nice orange cheeks. I know bears don't specifically have cheeks, but my bears do okay. <laughs> And then this one down here. Notice I didn't fasten it off. I'm just carrying it down. <sighs> if I was doing it properly, I would probably have fastened it off. Well, I am doing it properly, but if I was doing it <clears throat> um, not on video, I'd probably have just fastened it off and restarted it but you know time is of the essence <laughs> let's go down here and give myself a little stalky stalk <clears throat> and some leaves so i'm just going in here out here wrap it around i've got a leaf and I'm going to put one a little further up there, going the other way. So, let's turn it around. In. Wrap it around. And. 
that. So that little flower has got a leaf. Now I'm running out of thread. So I'm going to fasten this one off on the back. I think I'm going to have to put my blind down. I'm sorry, folks, for the interruption. But I'm going to put my blind down and come back. Hate to close out the sun and all that, but it was just a little too much. Right. A little more thread. Thread my needle. And I want to put that second stalk on that other button flower we've got going on here. So I'm going to take the stalk down there. And then give some leaves. Oh, hello, Mr. Buzzy Fly. You've come to disturb as well now. Seems to be one of those days. <laughs> Let's take that in there. That's one leaf. And the side of there. Coming up to there. Wrap it around. <laughs> Not around the button. Come on, play nicely. There we go. And down there. That's that. And done. That's enough. Okay, back to the dilemma. Tie or no tie? Hmm. <laughs> I can't decide. No. 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 Just showing you the dilemmas that you have as you go along. Actually. This is spur of the moment, spur of the moment idea and cutting. It's cutting a little, a little bow tie. I can't resist. I have to try it. And if it doesn't work on him, I'll find someone else to put it on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got to go with that now. Yeah, perfect. So... Grabbing out my Aileen's Felt and Foam Tacky Glue, which is my best friend, or one of my best friends. I've got quite a few in my tools. I'm going to put a little blob on there, a little blob on there. And that can sit there. And then, have a Mr. Tiger. I want to give him... That's my little tin of bits. She says, knowing that she's got about 600 ten tins of bits hanging around on the, the desk as I speak. It's going to take more than a cursory look, I think. I'll be back in a second. Right, we're all good. I found the little bit of glittery fabric that I wanted to put on his bow tie, just to give him a finish off. And I think he's looking cute now. Now, what I want to do is add in some small stitches um, in this area here. I like to add in something because um, they've got a lot of decoration on there. So I don't want to add in too much. But I want to grab out some, um, some threaded, maybe that lighter green, perhaps. And... Looking through my threads, what do I got that I could use? Where's that? No, that's too, too bright. I'm going to search through. Saying that's too bright, that's an orange. <laughs> Let's go with that. It wasn't just quite right. And so I'm going to go with this one. This is almost neon this colour. It's kind of a very, very bright orange. But because I've got an orange in there, I'm going with it. And I'm going to finish that off with that. Thread needle, she said. Try again. 
Needle threading, when you are videoing, never really truly works properly. I should use my needle threader, but I'm determined to thread this needle now. There we go. <laughs> Determination. And what I'm going to do up in this top corner is just to add some little stitches going down. I'm going to just add some contrasting. They're a smaller size than the ones going across, but I just really wanted to add some of this really bright colour in because, just because. So I'm going to ignore the fact that that is a separate piece of fabric, which I could stitch into with something else. I'm just going to go in with these tiny little orange stitches. Don't ask me why, I just feel them at the moment. <laughs> I don't get that button wrapped around there. And I'm just going to go in because. Okay. Keep forgetting that I am need to be able to be seen. There we go. So literally just a little one in stitch. No rhyme or reason to it, just because I fancied it. <laughs> and I kind of like it. It's added in a little extra something. And a bit of a contrast. So there's a lot of green going on in here, so I have to add in some of my very bright. So I'm really feeling fluorescent at the moment. I've got I've got a real feel for greens and fluorescence. Not necessarily together, but in this case, this this is a very bright orange. I wouldn't say it necessarily was a fluorescent orange, but it, it's kind of working, so I'm liking it. So let's finish that one off and give it a snip. Having a look at my piece now. It all seems pretty unified at the moment, and I am loath to add in too much extra to it just because um, so although I pulled out that light green I thought that was just going to be too much more green and the orange is a perfect solution to that so now what I'm going to do is place it on my background piece here and I, I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to use that orange to go around the whole piece just to finish it off. I know on, on my tiger I used like a red, a pinky red and that worked really well. And on my lion I used a nice blue that showed up. I quite like the stitches to show up so you know what let's go with it. Let's have another length of this lovely vibrant orange. Uh, if you're wanting to know what this is, by the way, it's a DMC um, cotton pearl and it is a 608. If you are as grabbed with the, with the colour as I am. Right in this needle, I'm just taking it a little bit closer to myself so I can see what I'm doing. Bear with, bear with, it's having a moment. Sometimes the end just frays up a little bit. If you can see on that one, <laughs> taking it too close, kind of makes it harder. So just playing around with it now. There we go. It won't go one way, it will go the other way. We will make it. <laughs> now, I've got this in position here, but what I want to do is I'm going to stick a bit of this on so that it will keep its position on my piece while I stitch it down. So there we go. That is the um, the Bohin Quilters um, Temporary Glue uh, fabric. 
a fabric glue so don't worry about it it's not going to harm the piece at all and this is where i see whether my decision was right <laughs> to go with this very bright orange i am loving it i have to say and against the screen it just shows up beautifully i know some people will be screaming no go with the green but no i'm going with this orange you do you i'll do me <laughs> and i'm liking this very very bright orange just as an overstitch so i am going to do this all the way around the piece all the way around to the other side and then that will be finished okay so my bear is now finished i have uh, gone around in my beautiful very vibrant orange <laughs> i really like it i wouldn't change a thing about it i love it um so that that is how i make my little swappy stitchy squares um and so if you want to do something similar then you've got all the the ideas here to do it um I think it goes quite nicely with my lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave that there and hope that good old uh, good old YouTube will pick that up as a thumbnail, maybe. Maybe it will. <laughs> anyway, there we are. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, don't forget, if you're enjoying the, the channel and the content that I give out for you, um, don't forget to maybe give me a thumbs up so show me your thumbs show me your thumbs and also if you're liking everything on the channel and you want to see more and you want to know when i'm uploading please consider subscribing out of the night the hundred percent of people who watch my videos only 46 percent are subscribed um so if you're considering it please do consider it a little further because it really does help with the algorithm when people subscribe and it will help get my videos out to more people who might appreciate the madness that is the kooky corner of youtube <laughs> have a great day i will be back very soon with something else bye for now